Hey everybody, welcome back. Mike here in today's video. I'm gonna teach you how to add a module from a site such as ExploitDB into Metasploit so that you can use it in your pen testing activities. So that said, let's jump right into it because there's a lot of stuff I wanna cover in this video. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about ExploitDB. So what is ExploitDB? Well, if I can get over my poor typing, I just got this new keyboard and I have yet to actually figure it out. Uh, but if we go to exploit-db.com, we see it's an exploit database. There's tons of stuff here. It's all exploits written by people. Uh, some of them can be used with Metasploits, some of them can't. The first thing to point out is you do need to use a file that is a Ruby file. That means it ends in .rb. If it ends in .c or .py for Python or .txt, those are not files for Metasploit. You need a Ruby file. So that's the first thing to take away. Now let's just pick something. Uh, let's go through, I'm just gonna pick a random random exploit here. So if we go to this exploit uh, called Civi CRM 5.59, uh, it's made for a PHP platform. It's referencing this CVE right here, and it lets us download it right here. So if I were to hit download on that, we see it's actually a text file. And if we scroll down, it has all of the instructions for how to do it, essentially. Uh, so this is not something we could use in Metasploit, but this kind of gives you uh, the general idea of the structure of, Met of exploits within ExploitDB. Now, let's go ahead and close this out. So here's where things get interesting. Now within Metasploit, and you know what? I probably should have had another terminal open. Let's go ahead and launch Metasploit. We'll type in MSF console and hit enter to launch Metasploit. Now what I wanna focus on once this opens up is we can search within Metasploit for exploits, right? So it just opened up here. Uh, if we go in here and we do uh, search Cisco D WLC, for example, we see we get no results, right? None at all. But if we go to exploit DB, which I, I just closed out, I probably shouldn't have, we probably would find some. So thankfully there is a CLI based tool that lets us interface with exploit DB. So we don't have to use the website all the time. That tool is called search exploit. All right. So in this terminal on the left, we're going to do search exploit Cisco WLC. And we see we get three results back here. So Searchploit is literally making a call out to uh, ExploitDB essentially. So you notice the difference here, right? Metasploit doesn't know about these exploits right here. It has no knowledge of them. That's why we're here today. I'm gonna teach you how to get this exploit right here. We'll, we'll look at this one right here because this is a Ruby file. So we're gonna take this exploit for Cisco WLC 4402 and we're going to figure out a way to get that into Metasploit right here. So to do that, all we have to do is using the search exploit command, we can do search exploit dash M. Then we need to reference the path of that exploit in this case right here, hardware slash DOS, uh, which is a denial of service. And then the actual uh, ID of that exploit. So we'll go ahead and copy that. We'll paste it down here and that's it. That's the command we need. Now here's the thing. When we type this command, it's going to actually using this dash M what this does is it downloads this, this exploit right here into our present working directory, uh, which is right here. We're in our, our home directory. So just keep that in mind. If I hit enter, we see it downloads and we get this path right here. This is what we really care about. This path, exploits, hardware, DOS. The reason we care about that is to add a module to use it in Metasploit you have to essentially recreate that folder structure on your local system. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so in our case, the Metasploit folder that we care about where all the modules can be found is actually at our home directory slash dot MSF four. So it's a hidden directory. Keep that in mind. Now, once you're here, if you do an LS, you'll see some other directories. The one we care about is modules. So we'll go ahead and CD into modules and do another LS. We have a directory called exploits, which is perfect. So what basically what we're doing is we're trying to make sure this exists, right? So let's go uh, CD into exploits, do an LS. 
Okay, so we have PHP and Windows, but we do not have hardware slash DOS. So let's go ahead and do make dir hardware, and we'll CD into that. Then we'll do make dir DOS, CD into that. Okay, so hopefully you see where we're going here. So now inside of our modules directory for Metasploit, we have exploits, hardware, DOS. And now all we need to do is actually copy that that exploit that we downloaded into this directory. So to do that, I think we did, um, let's see, it's going to be uh, root, I think is where we downloaded it. Actually, I think we downloaded it into there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right here. We could have just copied this. So we'll just copy that and go back here and paste it. I know I could use keyboard shortcuts, but uh, I've had this keyboard for like three weeks and I still can't paste reliably with it. So until I figure that out, that's what we're doing. Um, all right, so we're gonna move it from there and we wanna move it into our present directory. So we'll do the period. All right, so now if we do an LS, we see it is in that directory. Okay, so the next step that you have to do, it's very important, don't skip this, is with root privileges, you'll do update DB and hit enter. If you don't have root privileges, you'll do a sudo, sudo update DB. So this is technically updating a database in Linux uh, and then Metasploit relies on that database. So that's why we're doing that. So that's not specifically a Metasploit database per se. Now on this side, we're going to have to exit out of Metasploit and re-enter it. So I exited, let's run MSF console again, since that update DB process is done. And what we're hoping here is when it loads that we see instead of 2,295 exploits, we have one more, we have one new one. Uh, so let's see, yep, there we go. Look, we have 2,296 now. And now if we search Cisco WLC and we still don't get a result, that's kind of interesting, but let's do this. Uh, let's do, um, let's do, actually, you know what? Let's do use. So you can use the use command and you can actually put the path of exploits and it will reference them. So. What we can do is if we go up here, the quick way to do this is do this, get this path right here. So we can copy that and we'll go ahead and paste that in. Okay, so hopefully you guys saw that. So uh, it, I searched for it, it didn't show up, but it is here because when I said use exploits hardware DOS 9268.ruby, it showed up. If I do info now, We can actually see, let's scroll up. This is Cisco WLC 4200 basic auth denial of service. That is the same exploit that we just downloaded. So it is definitely in Metasploit. So just keep that in mind. It Typically, if, if things would have worked out good, we would have seen it in our search, but it did work. Obviously we saw the number increase in the number of exploits loaded in Metasploit. So it, we were successful in what we were trying to do. All right, so there's one more thing I wanna show you before we close out this video. It's very important. Now that is when you're using the search exploit command. So if we do search exploit uh, Cisco, for example, you get a list of all of these Cisco exploits, right? Now here's the thing, search exploit relies on its own database. So we do need to update that manually at some periodic interval. To update the search exploit database, all you have to do is search exploit dash U and I've updated mine recently, but uh, let's see. Yeah, it's still updating. We're trying to actually, uh, but yeah. So you see here, it's actually going through and it's essentially pulling down a new list of exploits. Uh, so we see here it, it went ahead and it was successful or it's still working on it rather, but you kind of get the point. Essentially, the reason we want to do this is if you don't find an exploit, it might just be because your database and search exploit is old. So just make sure that you kind of make it a habit, maybe you know every time you use it or once a week or once a month or something that you go ahead and update that database. All right, so that's all I got. Making sure I'm recording. I hope you found it useful. If you did, subscribe for more content like this. I got a lot of stuff coming out for you guys this year. Trust me, a lot. Make sure you hit the bell as well. If you don't, you'll just subscribe and then you'll never see anything. And it's not like I'm dropping videos 24 hours a day, so the notifications aren't that bad. I mean, it would be pretty cool though if I could put out videos like 24 hours a day though.
Hmm. No, I can't do that. I got to eat. <sighs> so until next time, stay safe and healthy. And most importantly, you know the rule. No, that's not a rule. Well, it should be. Stay nerdy. <laughs>